Welcome back to this video series about microchips fan controllers. In the previous video we talked about microchips various fan controllers and in this video we'll go over some vital information about DC fans and PWM signals. Fans are ubiquitous and they form an integral part of thermal management systems in electronic applications. Heat generated from electrical circuits is typically undesirable and often requires dedicated management strategies. The most common method of heat management is the use of heat sinks, which are in constant contact with the electrical circuitry to absorb heat. However, this strategy has limitations when it comes to enclosed environments. For example, the CPU of your laptop has a heat sink associated with it. However, sometimes when the CPU is working on several resource intensive applications, it starts generating excessive amounts of heat. Although this heat is being transferred to the heat sink, the temperature of the heat sink and the CPU continue to rise since there's no outlet for the heat due to the enclosed space in which these components are placed. In such cases, a fan is needed to provide airflow, which helps in transferring heat and cooling the system. Probably the most common type of fan in today's applications is what's called a brushless DC motor fan. Brushless DC motors have some important advantages and properties that make them reliable and easy to use. In this video, we'll talk about how they work, specifically as a fan, how we can measure their speed, and how we can control their speed. A DC motor forms the core of the DC fan. It is the DC motor that produces the rotational movement of the fan. A DC motor is basically a transducer that converts electromagnetic energy into mechanical energy by means of magnets and coils of wire. The speed and force with which the motor rotates depends on both the electrical input being fed to the motor and the design of the motor. The motor consists of a ring magnet that encloses electromagnetic coils. The coils are arranged in pairs representing north-south magnetic poles. An N-pole fan has N poles of north-south magnetic poles or N pairs of electromagnetic coils. At any instance, only one pair of coils are driven. A magnetic field is induced through the coils as current passes through them. This field interacts with the magnetic field of the enclosing ring magnet as repulsion or attraction, depending on the polarity of the electromagnetic coil. This interaction causes the motor to rotate. In three and four wire fans, a Hall effect sensor senses the magnetic field changes caused by the rotation of the magnetic ring. When the magnetic field around the Hall effect sensor changes direction, the sensor's output follows the change to create a sine wave. The sine wave is fed to a Schmidt trigger to get a square wave output. This digital output is called the tack signal. Let's consider a two-pole fan going at 6,000 RPMs, which means it will rotate 100 times per second. One rotation would correspond to two pulses of the tack signal. Therefore, the tack frequency is 200 Hz. So you can see how the tack signal gives us a direct picture of the fan speed in the electrical domain. Generally speaking, tack pulse frequency is equal to RPMs times the number of poles divided by 60. A single pole fan would give rise to one pulse over a single rotation. A three pole fan would give three pulses over one rotation. And a four pole fan would give four pulses over one complete rotation and so on. Hence, for a two-pole fan, five edges of the tack signal would indicate the fan has completed one complete rotation. This is the most critical signal for control fan operation, since it provides a mean for feedback to the fan driving circuitry, which we'll talk about later in this video. Depending on the way the air flows from the fan, there are two basic types of fans, axial and centrifugal. In axial fans, the air flows along the axis of rotation from one side of the fan to the other. These fans provide high airflow and are quieter. In centrifugal fans, the air is pulled in along the axis of rotation, but is pushed in a direction perpendicular to the axis. This type of fan is also called a blower type fan, and is typically louder than the axial type and provides lower airflow. 
Also, fans typically can come with three different configurations of wires. There's the two-wire DC fan that only has power and ground, the three-wire DC fan where one wire is power, one is ground, and the third is the tack signal, and four-wire fans that are the same as three-wire fans, but the fourth wire corresponds to the pulse width modulation, or PWM, control signal, which is what we'll talk about next. The wire coloring scheme of fans is not consistent and you need to check with the manufacturer to figure out the wire functionalities. The PWM signal is a very common method used to control the speed of the fan. It's what the name implies. A pulse sent to the fan driver circuitry whose width can be modulated based on the desired speed. The term duty cycle is used to describe the ratio of how long the pulse is on versus off. A 50% duty cycle means the pulse is on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time. A 10% duty cycle would mean it's on 10% of the time and off 90% of the time. Since the PWM signal from the EMC230X family does not supply enough current to drive a fan by itself, fan driver circuitry is required either externally like on the EMC2305 evaluation board or internally built into the fan. When using two and three wire fans, you will need an external fan drive circuit. But four wire fans typically have this fan driver circuitry built into them. The ADM00879 comes with a three wire fan where the black wire goes to ground, the red wire to the driver circuitry, and the blue wire is the tack signal from the fan. However, the onboard fan driver circuitry can be bypassed, making it compatible with four wire fans as well. In our next few videos, we'll talk about this evaluation board and its associated graphical user interface in more detail. We'll use this board to help explain the necessary hardware and firmware and many of Microchip's fan controller features.